Hey, what's up guys? What an absolute unit of a news day today. There is so much to talk about in the Apple world. So first off, of course, the FaceTime hack that broke last night is just absolutely mental. To the iPhone 11, the design has been confirmed and there have been many other features detailed in this report that get me super hyped about the iPhone 11. Like USB-C is actually happening amongst other things. The iPod Touch 7th generation has been confirmed and more. So guys, let's get into it. This is a huge news day. Anyways, first off is of course the FaceTime hack. So yes, without ever consenting to a call, someone could get through and listen to you immediately through this FaceTime bug. It is just, it's insane to think about that this is possible and the way that Apple handled it is even worse. Breaking it down, in case you guys haven't heard of it, it was absolutely everywhere. It was just, for me, I couldn't post about it last night. It just wouldn't happen. So today I'm reporting on it. Apple basically patched this. It's nothing to worry about. But yesterday and basically two weeks in advance of that, you were able to call someone without their consent without them ever picking up the phone call, you can immediately listen in using a bug into what they were doing or saying, you know, the iPhone was basically that spy that opened the door up. And there have been several videos showing this example online. So Mac Rumors posted one, uh, there have been other users on Twitter and just seeing how simple it is, it, it blows my mind, seriously. It does get worse though, it's just bad. If you click the power button while that call is ringing, it hasn't accepted or anything. If you click the power button to end it, it stays frozen on that screen and suddenly you can see a video feed, like literally a video FaceTime feed of what that iPhone is doing, where it's at, without the other person ever knowing. Granted, the audio cuts off when that one happens, but still, that is damaging, that is bad. This is worse than a bypass into the phone, like anyone can literally listen to what you're doing without your consent. So obviously, Apple right away pulled back the FaceTime servers, uh, they killed those until they can figure this issue out. But here's the really bad part, is this was reported to Apple on January 23rd by a teenager. His mom actually spoke out on the internet and said that they did report it to Apple, they didn't take any immediate steps to fix this issue. They obviously just left it under the cover, kind of hoping that no one would figure it out until iOS 12.2. And 9to5Mac, I mean, you guys have to read this article. 9to5Mac wrote a very great opinionated article on why Apple should have went into red alert and basically fix this as soon as possible. With their stance on privacy, with their stance on all of your stuff in your iPhone remaining yours and that security, Apple should have immediately pushed out iOS 12.1.4. Instead, what they did was cross their fingers and hope, hey, maybe this doesn't get out and it all gets smoothed over. So obviously they went into damage control yesterday, they killed FaceTime and it's just bad, seriously. Apple did respond in an official statement saying that later this week an iOS update will be released to address this. Of course, very unlikely that's gonna be iOS 12.2 as we're only in the first beta and this is a pretty significant update. That means iOS 12.1.4 is very likely to drop here any day. I wouldn't be surprised even if it's later today, tomorrow, just immediately and that's the way it should be. Okay, so getting past that FaceTime fiasco, iOS 12.2 reveals new secrets about new Apple products. So the iPod Touch 7th generation has been confirmed. The new iPads, four models in particular, have been confirmed. And this is after the filings with the Eurasian Committee have been already made, and that evidence is one piece, this is another. This is coming from Steve Trotton Smith, and yes, he confirms new iPads are coming, but more interestingly is that the iPod Touch 7th generation is officially confirmed. Apple is working on it, and this is collaborating with the earlier sources and rumors that it was being worked on. So this is direct proof directly in Apple's code, and we might see a release here in March. Alongside Air Power, possibly the new AirPods, the iPads, Apple's gonna have a mini event, I'm, I'm guessing, and this is where they're gonna release all of this stuff. So he goes into detail and he actually gives us an insight on the iPod Touch and its biometric security. He says, there is absolutely no reference to Face ID or Touch ID to the iPod Touch. And in our video, I kind of made a prediction and we thought this might happen. This is a product that Apple doesn't really care about so they wouldn't bother putting in this expensive technology. The price should remain low. It's such a low priority thing for Apple that why even bother with those things? So I think that they're just gonna have a passcode security just like they did on the sixth generation iPod Touch. Also those iPads, the reference he found in iOS 12.2 to them, there's also no mention of Face ID. So those budget end iPads, also a prediction, the iPad mini 5 and the $329 iPad replacement will both not have Face ID as they're gonna remain in budget models. And hey, here's something pretty significant about iOS 12.2 I didn't know and I thought I'd share with you. So iOS 12.2 includes Swift 5, the programming language, and this new version of the language is now binary compatible. So what that means in a nutshell is that your apps are about to get a little bit smaller and they're going to load faster in iOS 12.2. I think I'll do a dedicated speed test just for this, but for example, Apollo has switched from about 35 
uh, to 36 megabytes down to 30 megabytes after iOS 12.2. It doesn't seem like a very big change, but that reflected on all the apps that you have if the developers do update them to support the, the new language. It could mean a lot more storage for you if you update to 12.2. Couple little things I wanted to mention before we get into those iPhone 11 leaks. I was 13, man, at this point, I've, I'm just preparing myself for disappointment because I am so excited for it and I hope that Apple is finally taking the time to put in the effort into iOS that it deserves. And this is just a little thing that I saw on my Twitter feed today that I just wish Apple would, would implement into iOS. So this is from an application on Android Outlook Mobile, just one little animation that the developers are so proud of. When you scroll through the timeline, the actual animation changes to reflect that. It is the tiniest, absolutely tiniest little animation, but that attention to detail says it all. I mean, these guys are proud of their work. Why can't Apple do this on a larger scale? Just give life to iOS in little tiny ways, little animations, maybe animate the icons even. Don't make it busy. Don't make it a crazy, overwhelming amount of info like some of the jailbreak tweaks I showed you guys, but they should implement that, and I really appreciated that. Okay, in the iPhone 11, the victor has been decided. The victor of the iPhone iPhone design game takes home the spoils of war. So apparently Apple in their war room has finally made the decision of which iPhone design is staying. It was a battle between the Cyclops design or bender versus the square lens that just looks like a GoPro stuck on the iPhone. Apparently compare Roger, the, the new source that broke the second design says Apple has decided on the Cyclops design and they will be sticking to that one. It's unclear what steered them into that direction, but I'm, I'm more than positive that it was just the backlash online. Apple might have even leaked this, these designs just to see how people would gauge them, how they would take it, and they've stuck with that Cyclops design. And let me tell you why that's so important, because that square lens design limits the, the way that Apple will structure the inside of the iPhone so much. And with that Cyclops one, plus the new rumored battery changes I'll mention here in a second, it's absolutely the logical way to go for Apple, just from a build perspective, not even visually. And I guess it's kind of cool to know which direction Apple is going on. So they've settled on that Cyclops design. To go alongside with this, John Gruber of Daring Fireball uh, tweeted this, basically wondering why Apple had the camera in the top left this entire time. Apple is all about that symmetry, that attention to detail, so it kind of makes sense that they would make the iPhone symmetrical instead of having it lopsided. The report also mentions a lot of new details about this iPhone that makes it seem like a very big upgrade. So first thing is that it will have all around smaller bezels. The bezels will be shrinking on the actual edges of the iPhone everywhere. As a result, you'll get more screen estates with less phone to grip, so it could mean a more comfortable iPhone uh, to begin with. And the report also mentions that 5G networks will not be happening on the iPhone this year. Unfortunately, they just couldn't make it happen in time. And of course, we know with Apple's history, they are very slow to adopt new cellular technologies. There are two reasons that they outline here. For one, Apple's ongoing issues with Qualcomm, they could not make a deal as a result of all of that. And two, Intel's modems are not ready for prime time. Their 5G modems just aren't up to par yet, so Apple's gonna wait on that, and 2020 will be the deciding year for Apple, whether they'll add that technology or not. Plus, and I think this plays a big factor, is that Apple is trying to make their own modems. So, you know, they might be able to perfect that by the time 2020 rolls around, and Apple's all about controlling the interior of the iPhone. That's just another thing to check off the list and get out of the way. And this is big, like seriously big and physically big too. The battery on the 2019 iPhone will finally be the biggest ever in an iPhone. And I'm, I'm sure this refers to the max size, the largest one, but four, thousand milliamps. I'm saying it like it's this miracle, but phones have had that for the longest time. It is about time that Apple catches up. So a 4,000 milliamp battery will be included in this year's iPhone, and hopefully that reflects on huge battery gains, because sometimes we do see those increases in battery size, but with larger displays that basically gets neutralized. We never see that battery change. So hopefully with this concretely larger battery, we do see that change. And this all ties in again with the internals of the iPhone. That's changing. They're changing completely. Apple is taking the battery battery from that L shape and making it into a rectangle, they're going to place it towards the bottom of the phone, the logic board will now sit above the battery. And this all ties in with that camera design again. Because they're relocating that camera, they can readjust and relocate the logic board, they can make that Face ID module a little bit smaller, so everything is falling into place here, and it totally makes sense. That camera design may not look the best, but physically, internally, it's going to mean some major changes for the iPhone, including the battery. And they added that USB-C is happening this year, and this is what gets me excited most of all because one standard, I've been asking Apple for that for the longest time, one standard across all devices. I have to use adapters, dongles, just 
it's infuriating. If Apple had USB-C on their MacBooks, on their iPads, which they do, but now the iPhone needs to catch up, it's all gonna be just a perfect harmony. And I'm so excited for that. So your life as a result will almost be relaxed and, and simplified having to carry less cables, less baggage in your life. And of course, some bad news. We've heard this great news about the new iPhone. Now we can't end it on a good note. It has to be a bad one. 3D Touch is actually dying. It is more than likely that this year on 2019 iPhones, there will be no more 3D Touch. It'll all be replaced by that haptic touch feature shared with the iPhone XR. That was Apple's experiment, their dabble into the world without 3D Touch, and they're really seeing the repercussions of that. Nobody is really complaining. It's just a small group online. And overall, Apple takes a look at the masses. The masses truly do not care about 3D Touch, so it's just a feature they can get rid of to make the iPhone price cheaper, make it simpler to make. There are benefits to removing 3D Touch, but don't get me wrong, they are mostly for Apple. It's mostly to save Apple a little headache, a little bit of money with designing the iPhone. For us, it, it sucks. Honestly, I love 3D Touch. I wish it would stay. But Cult of Mac has assembled all the rumors regarding 3D Touch dying, and they're saying it is very likely, more than likely, that this year it will not happen on any of the iPhones. Otherwise, there it is. Huge news day for Apple. I'm gonna have some more videos up for you later this week. I also wanted to mention a giveaway I'm working on for the 10 years thing, so I'll have that out for you later this week. Peace, guys.